Good morning, PlusTube. It's Pam, stitching between the lines. Today is Tuesday, November 1st, 2022, and this is PlusTube number 118. Um, I made an entire video. It was fabulous. Cooper even made an appearance. I don't think he made that appearance once, sat around for a minute, and then he left. So I bet that he won't be back. Looking at my book of days where I keep a few notes. So here we are making it again. If this one has no sound, that was the weirdest thing. I don't think I've ever, ever had that happen. I did a couple little tests. They also had no sound. And then I did a test and it had sound. So I started the video again. Then I stopped it just to test it. And I thought, well, what's the point of that? Because who knows if when I start it up again, if it's working. So urgh. technology, I've never had my iPad fail me like that. So that's disappointing. So here we go again. Um, if this doesn't work, I'm not sure what I'm doing because, hello, I got things to do. Um, yeah, so it's November, November 1st. I'm sitting in my kitchen because we're having some hardscape work done, rather extensive hardscape. And in my sewing room, my windows that are right there, like an arm's length away from where I sit, is where they walk through or drive their equipment through or whatever to get around to the back of the house. And um, so I, I thought I was avoiding that. And then this morning they're working on the stairs that are, there's a breakfast room that I'm looking at and then a whole wall of windows and they are out there <laughs> working on the steps that go down off the deck has some steps that go down off of it and then you do more steps in the along the grass way to get down to the patio that's at the lower level um and that's the first thing they're rebuilding is that um it was sinking towards the house <laughs> so nobody wants that so i don't know what's going on they were all just up on the deck a second ago which is really close to me so I don't know, this might not have been the best spot. Um, the lighting is weird because there's a skylight up there. I turned off the overhead light because that was like, like you were at an outdoor sporting event at night. So hopefully it's not, the light isn't terrible, terrible. And uh, hopefully you can't hear them because in one of my test videos, I could hear them. So anyway, we'll do the best we can do and hopefully have a video that we're uploading soon. So what did I do in October? October had a couple focus pieces that still aren't done. And then it had a piece that I'm sorry, I can't show you. Um, just I hope everybody will respect the fact that some things in, are just pr private or for my family or whatever. I just don't want um, a lot of those sorts of details and just whatever um, <clears throat> out there <laughs> made public. So that was an intense piece that I actually finished yesterday. I have to FFO it and whatever. But um, so in October, I worked on a couple things. So let me go backwards in my pile because I made my pile all condensed down. Uh, for, let me, oh, here, it's November 1st, so the Halloween stuff has to come down. So there's my Brenda Gervais um, Jack-o'-lantern lane piece that's in the slop jar, the enamel wear slop jar up there. So sad to have to take that down because that was kind of fun, fun and clever. Certainly I appreciated it. Um, my first focus piece anyway was August by Waxing Moon. I do not remember where I was. I didn't watch the video to see. Uh, but you can just trust me that I did a lot. Of, I did a lot. Um, I filled in all the green. I'm not sure how much of the flowers and stuff I had to do. Probably a lot. The, I don't know. The house I know I worked on. I even outlined it. Can you, can you hear them? I hear them. Uh, last night I was working on this. And so uh, it's coming along. It's coming along. I don't love working on it. It's on a piece of... Um, color and cock but this particular piece of fabric um named i don't know what sorry sometimes i have them in here it's on, I, on the x stitch app and that is what i'm talking to you on uh, i don't know what it's on um treasure map maybe and i don't i can't it's probably an even weave but usually color and cotton is very supple but this feels like it has a lot of drag like my thread is very drags on it a lot so I'm not loving that but it will get done don't worry have no fear it will get done 
And then I also worked on my hashtag Leanne's Legacy piece that um, was started in August on the 24th, and it's a Leanne's Legacy Sal, S-A-L. Um, Barb from Lost and Floss asked if anybody wanted to join, obviously, <laughs> you didn't have to, um, to stitch something that was reminiscent of Leanne. And seeing as she was a quilter, she liked the color red, this one just, um, to me, called right out. So I started this one in August for her birthday on her birthday and I had parts of the house done and I've gone and finished that and added a lot of the stripes so it hasn't had a ton of work but that's okay it's not my focus piece um, uh, both of those I imagine will still be around at the end of the year and go on my Whipco board Whipco this will be the first time I ever do it in 2023 and um, we'll talk about that later um, later like in a future video later not today later um so in august so in october i um did some traveling and i lost a little bit of time to jet lag and travel bumps in the road and i went to a quilt retreat i go every year there's two of them every year um it's not far from here about a half hour it's right by where i used to live um and i come home at night but i had to a variety of prep to do for that and then work to do when I was there so um, that has been going on and then I um, volunteered to make some memory quilts for somebody um, in our extended family who lost their husband uh, unexpectedly and kind of tragically over the summer um, so he left a widow and a teenage daughter and I said I would make uh, memory quilts with his shirts and so ultimately it looks like I'm making four and I've never made t-shirt quilts, <laughs> so, so there's that. Um, when I was at my retreat last week, um, somebody was making one, and one of the women who works in the quilt store that helps put this shop, put this retreat on, was um, helping her. So I was eavesdropping a lot. Not that I, they would, she would help me 100%, but I just didn't want to get in anybody's business. I guess whatever. I just wanted to soak it up, right? So I learned a lot of things um, there. Um, so I have some supplies that I've gathered and stuff, but I was nervous. I'm nervous about cutting into these shirts. It's not like I can recreate them or just go buy more. So I kept putting off. I kept putting off doing anything with them, and um, but I really do need to get going on it. And um, so yesterday I decided yesterday was the day so I have everything ready I've run everything through the wash I've done all this stuff and then I decided to FFO things because because that's how it works when you're stalling right I um have if anybody's been here for any length of time you know that when I FFO I like mm, I get out a piece I maybe think about a frame or what I'm going to do with it and I maybe cut the foam core board and maybe I don't and Maybe I lay a bunch of stuff out and maybe six months goes by. <laughs> so it kind of goes like that. I don't know. What can I say? So anyway, yesterday I finished this. When I was, the other day I laced it. I mean, that's how much I did. Like, that's how <laughs> it was stalling. I've been stalling for a couple days. So Autumn Harvest Sampler by Kathy Barrick. This was a round robin I did with some friends. And um, I've always wanted to do a round robin, quilting or stitching. And it's hard to find anybody who also wants to do that because um, sorry, distractions. I don't know. Something's going on out there. Um, but anyway, we did it last year, 2021. And this was the piece I sent off. I have always loved this pattern. And always since I got it whenever that was it might be a three or four year old pattern that's all it's not like it's not like people always say I've always loved it and it's only been in existence for what a short amount of time so anyway um I mounted it on a I had this in my stash I have no idea where I got it one one of the stores I don't go to a lot of stores so Target uh, Michael's Joann's that's about the choices. There's a Hobby Lobby now, but I'm pretty sure when I bought this and stuck it in my file of finishing things that it was not from Hobby Lobby. And then this other piece 
is the last piece I had to finish on stuff I bought at Hobby Lobby when I went on my trip this past summer and took all my pieces I was trying to finish. So I this is Lakeside Lodge by Little House Needleworks and it's in a, I don't know what to call it, tray thing. And this these are like bowl fillers, like you just buy in a bag that I got at Hobby Lobby. So part of the reason why this took me so long, because this has been laced in on this foam core for a while, is that this was busy being a centerpiece on my dining room table with like a bunch of those like glass, not balls, but discs, I don't know, in a candle in the middle, sitting on a pretty little placemat thing. So that looked nice. So I didn't want to give that up. But I'll take that downstairs where we have all of our sort of lake, lake house themed things. So that. Two FFOs, two whips, a whip-ish piece that um, I Kingdom of Books. I'm going to have to um, put back in the bin of whips because I'm just not picking it up. I mean, it was a focus a couple months ago, and then I have been trying to do the background, finish the background, which is more than I set out to do when I set out to start it. I set out to get it done above any of the books, and then each time I worked, I would finish, when I did a book, I would do this part above it as well. So somehow that morphed into finish the whole thing and a book. So you know, I'm just making myself crazy over it and it's taken up a lot of spot space next to my stitching area. So I'm putting it back away. Um, it'll be a focus again though. So I'm not totally ignoring it. I'm just gonna quit pretending that I'm doing anything on it. And then I picked out my November pieces. What will be my November focus will be um, Madame LaFay's Mountain in Winter, the Mountain in Winter, which I love her patterns. This is the first one I've ever done, even though I've purchased a few. Um, I got this one as a birthday gift last year, and I started it immediately on a piece of fabric that I had, I think probably just, just gotten in a Fabric of the Month. So I, I, right here with me, I don't have the name of the fabric just just gotten in a fabric of the month so I, I, right here with me I don't have the name of the fabric I think the fabric of the month I think is seraphim fabrics so I don't know in a later date when I show it I'll have that information on hand when I made the video the first time I didn't have it either so it's I usually I keep it written down somewhere um, in the box of floss but there is nothing in there that's a, a tag or I leave the tag on the fabric so we're assuming I even have that information uh, generally it's on the X stitch app on my iPad which is where you and I are visiting from so that'll be November's focus I get to work on that today I'm very excited to do that and um, my minor piece will be Jolly Happy Soul by Brenda Gervais with a needle and thread. Um, this was in January 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, 2021. I started a new piece each day, and they all actually happened to be snowmen for whatever reason. I just willy-nilly picked things out. And for some reason, I have pulled this um, project bag out several times, and I just never want to do it. I think I was burned out on snowmen. So I have a little bin box, whatever, where I keep all my things that I say need less than a week. And this is the last thing in there. That box is now full completely of nothing but um, Mill Hill kits. So <laughs> they just have accumulated in there. So there, that's it. Isn't that weird? That's so little stitching for me, it would seem. Um, my focus has been on this this um on a lot of quilting in the um memory quilts i made um i've never done a t-shirt quilt like i said but i did a quilt with men's shirts i'm gonna put a picture in here in between making these videos it would have been nice if i'd gone and gotten it but i didn't because mostly i'm just <laughs> anxious about what's happened and what did i just spend all this time doing um <clears throat> so i was in florida for a stretch of time and I had sewn everything I took to sew and 
ran out of things to do so I went to the thrift store and I bought six men's shirts and I made this quilt and it's our favorite throw in the house so but it's um not knit like t-shirt cotton it's woven you know men's shirts so I'll show you a picture I happen to have a couple yards of this flannel that's like snowmen playing out in the woods I have no idea but it's very masculine and it just went perfectly with the quilt so that's our favorite favorite in the family room throw to throw over your lap or your legs or whatever um <clears throat> so I'd like to uh I, and I actually have another couple of um quilts in the works that are made from men's shirts that's kind of a whole thing you can buy books pattern books on that um Bonnie Hunter does that um and, uh, they're just neat I like plaids so anyway they're kind of fun patterns but I have t-shirts I've never worked with so that's in the works today I'm working on that again um, I'm trying I'm going on the quilt retreat that I just mentioned I went to in October there's a, li a, a little break off group is doing it again in November and I'm going to that so the first two of these memory quilts that are a particular style not they won't be the same as the other two um, I'm trying to get them to a certain point so I can take them there to work on. So I'm working on that and I have with my quilt guild there's some challenges and projects that need to be done and ready for the meeting coming up and for the meeting in December and so I'm kind of like feeling a little under the gun on those. So anyway as we talk about quilting I ran across this pattern. This is the quilt that's hanging behind me in the last video so that would be video 117. I didn't know the name of it at the time and if I'd have looked for this pattern I would not have found it because it was not where I expected it. I was looking for something else and there it was. There's a place I put all my finished patterns and this one was not there. So anyway it was called Furry Sweetness by um, Eat cake graphic design graphics it's so cute it was so fun to make um, my background fabric is this sort of brown marbled similar to that my browns are browns and I bought a bundle of batiks to make the animals and my quilt looks remarkably like this for having chosen everything myself it's a cutie it's a fun one to see um, I don't know what I'm putting up there next. Snowman. Uh, the pumpkins that I have hung in the past is hanging over a railing in the loft. So somewhere else. I probably won't hang that one. So that gives me an opportunity to hang something different. Uh, but I don't have a lot of like fall themed quilts. So I'm thinking it might end up being snowman. Although, even though we're having sort of mild fall we started off so cold I really expected snow there was the threat of snow several days in the middle of October but the weatherman assures us we have moved on to milder wet milder days so yay um the only purchase I had to show you which I've lost track of between videos oh excuse me it slid out of slid out of range or got pushed was I bought the new book of days um, I like having the book of days. I've tried a few other calendar keeping methods and um, interest. I'm just looking at October. See how blank October is? I keep all my whips listed over here. I keep a little accounting on the top of what I've got whips come, came into the month with and what's going on. So I have 11 whips. Um, there will be one more. I finished one that I can't show you. I'm going to start another one. I can't show you. Sorry. Um, but look, there was no starts. Um, last night there was a finish. One of them. The one I can't show you. So there was that. Um, I don't do all the stickers and all that. I don't really care about that. But um, in here, for example, here's September where I say I finished the Luca S. Pumpkins. And that I started the Ellen Chester because uh, I took that class, started that project, what, what floss tube number I'm making, and um, that kind of thing. So I like I like the book. I like keep I like this style. I like having this big, wide open um, space. And then when I was looking at it, just opening it up, I saw this whole big graph that you could graph on. Um, there's graphing involved in the t-shirt quilts, so this is actually kind of nice, although they're tiny. I'm very tiny for graphing like one square per inch that's tiny 
Um, I don't know. So anyway, I, I was using proper graph paper, so it's not like I wasn't able to graph. Um, so that's about it for stitching. That is so little. Usually I have, I don't know, more to show. And I've lost the project bag that this is in. There it is. So this is going to be even shorter than the last one. Holy cow. That's because Cooper made an appearance. That took some time. Um, I also, in that video, talked about um, something I had made um, maybe about six weeks ago. But this is the time if you wanted to do the same thing that you need to get started. So I make my own pure vanilla extract. I, I did it in September. September 2nd. See, I date it, so I know. Um, I bought... I, the first time I got this as a gift, they were in the cutest little round, like bulb-shaped apothecary bottles. What I found on Amazon was a box of 12 of these. So these, I still had a bunch that weren't used. Um, so I bought my uh, vanilla beans on Amazon, and it came in a package of 10. So I made five bottles, which was good because that's what I had. And you make vanilla extract by cutting the, I cut, there, in each jar there's two beans that I've cut in half and then I've slit open and spread them open a little bit and stick them in the jar and then you pour alcohol in there. So vodka, rum, whatever. And then you have to shake them a couple times a day for like six weeks. So these are ready to be used. Um, they make great gifts. Pure vanilla extract is very expensive. So I went through my alcohol cupboard, I don't even know, and we're not big drinkers at all, and I had like some vanilla rum, and I had, um, I had maybe some vanilla vodka and plain vodka. My preferred for this is vodka, I don't know why, I have no reason to say that. So I had those three bottles that were partly, um, had, you know, some amount of liquid in them, and I had to buy another bottle of vodka because I knew I didn't have enough. I These are eight ounce. I made five of them. So I poured, them, poured all my bottles, like the mad scientist, into this big measuring cup and made sure I had five cups worth. So I emptied three bottles and opened the fourth and um, poured it all in, tap it, put the label on, shake it, leave them on the counter, shake them every day. And they're handy, great little gifts. Put a ribbon around there. You can do fancier label. These are the labels that came with my bottle. And um, they're sort of like really official looking labels. I cut off some of the, I don't know, coding or whatever that's on code. Like, I don't know what any of it means. Just to have the plain white label. Um, put a ribbon on it and you're good to go. So anyway, the day I was making it, you know, I empty out three bottles and... I've got all the bottles in my hands. I'm taking them to go put them in the recycle bin. And my husband said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going down to the neighbors to throw them in their recycle bin. Because, you know, that was a lot of alcohol bottles all of a sudden in our bin. Which usually has like a jug of milk and some cereal boxes. And a few other cans and bottles. So, anyway. There's my uh, Christmas gift idea for you. And um, what else? November has Thanksgiving. I'm looking forward to that. My son and his fiance are moving back to New York in the next couple weeks. Um, he celebrates his 30th birthday. Holy cow. I don't know how that happens because I'm only like 36 myself. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a fun time of year. Generally, the holidays. I really enjoy the whole preparation and the in the, you know, the gatherings and the food part and all that kind of stuff is fun. So there you go. I am going to uh, make sure there's sound. I'm going to insert a couple pictures of the quilt somewhere I did in the pa in the back, somewhere you should have seen those already. And then um, I'm going to get to work. It's already 1030. Holy crow. Um, I should be well underway on working on this quilt that I'm finding reasons not to work on because I'm a little nervous about cutting up the shirts. Um, hopefully into the new year, I'll have pictures of those. But I, they need to be gifted and given to the person they're going to before um, they become public. So happy November, everybody. Stay safe, warm, dry, all the things and stitch away. Good Lord, Flostoop. Here we are continuing. This is a continuation an addendum to video 118. Um, okay, so I don't know what's going on with iMovies, but it's been challenging me today. Um, I was 
editing what you just watched and I was adding the text about one of the fabrics and this has been a problem for a while. When you add text, you cut the movie, you add the text and the text just stays on so long and then the movie continues. And when you want to cut again, every time you hit cut, it goes back to that original cut. And so you can't cut again. I am having trouble cutting again. I don't know why. I've done this for years. I know how to insert videos and, add, I mean, photos, videos, whatever, plus, um, you know, add text. And for some reason, it's been doing that. So I know that when you, I used to cut and then cut again a little bit later and add the text. And then it, it kind of kept that text in a block and then you could keep going. And so I don't know what's going on. Um, so that, I couldn't add the fabric a second. I did manage to add a second edit later with more text about the fabric for the second piece I didn't know. But then I was trying to add the photos very soon afterwards for the other quilt that I was referring to, the one that I made from men's shirts, those will go here. It's the first cut I'm making in this movie. So, I mean, in this little, you know, that will add on and I'll be able to add those photos also, I learned um, from Chris, the camping stitcher, about the Ken Burns effect on the pictures where it wants to scroll up and scroll down and whatever, and you miss really the whole point of the picture. I did add a picture of what I see when I look out my back window because I keep referring to it, and it did that fade out thing again or, you know, like, like it pans up, and I can't, like, right there in the midst of editing a video, cannot find where to turn that off again. So apparently that's something that comes back. I didn't know, so darn it all. Uh, I just, I hate being defeated by technology. I'm feeling like there's something wrong with, I don't know if it's iPad, iMovies, what's going on? Because another thing it did, um, the first time I had to completely stop editing the movie, not save it, go back and put it in again because it took, oh my gosh, it took the snippet where I added the first text over the picture and turned the picture upside down. The text was correct, right side up, but my, me talking was upside down. So I don't even know, I can't even pretend to know what that was all about or how to do that again. I don't think I touched any buttons that I wasn't touching in the first place. So there, there's that. And then I was looking at my notes and I noticed that I forgot in this newest video where there was actually sound to talk about the books. I have not had a good book to read in some time, so I don't have anything new, but I wanted to touch on what I had been reading in the video 117, I talked about The Keepers of Lost Causes by somebody whose first name I can't pronounce. Last name is hyphenated Alder. No, back up. Adler Olson. Uh, it was about a policeman who had um, fallen into disgrace in his... Um, with other officers, which always seems to be the case when there's any kind of um, book about detectives or whatever. So he was relegated to an office in the basement where he was given like cold cases. And I hated the amount that I hated that book. Um, I felt bad that I even talked about it. Don't read it. It's just, it was, I just did not like it. Not even a tiny bit. So it was, it's the first of a whole series of books. I won't be picking up any other ones um, in that series. And then I finally finished The Boys by Ron Howard, which was an enjoyable book. It's a kind of book that you can set aside, pick up later, um, something like that, because it's just not a really like, uh, it just sort of goes along through his life. And it, it, I don't even want to call them adventures, but it was very interesting. I mean, Ron Howard's been in my life, my whole life. So <laughs> it's, you know, I can remember one of my very earliest TV memories 
is of laying on the couch. We lived in that particular house when I was like three, four years old. I hadn't started kindergarten yet. In fact, we moved and it was still like another whole school year before I started kindergarten. So anyway, I remember laying on the couch because I had an earache with my head on like a heating pad. And my mother was doing the ironing. Like, I remember that. I don't remember any other kids around. I don't know. I don't have no idea. But and watching um, the Andy Griffith show. So anyway, um, anyhow, those that book is worth, you know, the effort. Get it from the library or something. I have a whole stack of books by my chair from, on the bookcase near me from, that I've picked up at thrift stores and, you know, the book, library book sales and stuff. So I have lots of choices. I just like to just kind of plod along with what I'm reading. Um, so I don't know. I, it's just nothing worth mentioning. So anyway, here we go again. Um, we'll make sure there's sound on this one. We'll add it to the end of the other one. And there, holy cow, let's hope that I can upload video 118 before this day is over. It's already 1130. That is insane. Holy cow. Usually the bulk of my like what I need to do is done by lunchtime. This is important though too, right? See ya. Bye.